millions of light years away from here, two black holes are orbiting each other, but they're growing closer, spiraling inward and stressing space-time, stretching and squashing it. When the objects finally merge, they expel explosive energy and convulse the fabric of space, creating a ripple of gravity itself. Thus, a gravitational wave is born. The fascinating thing about gravitational waves is that they can travel across space with little resistance from matter. Dust and gas don't block gravity because the waves stretch space itself, so gravity can travel extremely far. In space, the larger of a distance something has to travel to reach us, the further back in time we can look. Since gravity travels at the speed of light, that's extremely far. We can learn a lot about the universe and the nature of gravity if we could just detect these gravitational waves. But that's easier said than done. Gravitational waves may release a ton of energy, but they don't actually stretch space that much. The amplitudes are only 10 to the negative 21 meters. So how on earth do scientists measure these waves? Since gravity doesn't interact with matter the way light does, we can't exactly point a telescope. But luckily we have the interferometer. Interferometers are devices that merge two beams of light to compare if the light arrives at the same time. Basically, you take a laser and shoot light of a single wavelength at a semi-transparent mirror. This mirror lets half the light pass through and the other half reflect. Then the two beams get re-reflected back to the semi-transparent mirror again, where they reach a detector. The detector reveals an interference pattern, a pattern where light waves either grow stronger or cancel out in constructive and deconstructive interference, respectively. If a beam was late, then an interference pattern will look different. Let's say that normally the light beams cancel out completely and there's no light in the interference pattern. Then, a gravitational wave passes and the entire interferometer contorts like this. One arm gets stretched more and the other shrinks. This is called differential arm motion. The light in the longer arm has to travel further, which takes more time and makes the light lag. Because the beams travel at different times, you can see the light in the interference pattern fluctuate over time. And there you go. Evidence of gravitational waves. But before you get out the lasers and mirrors to test this out for yourself, you've got to know that the devices required to make these measurements are incredibly precise. Kind of important when the amplitudes you're working with are smaller than a proton. That's why gravitational wave interferometers are huge, because more precise measurements require huge arms. For example, LIGO detectors have arms that are physically 4 kilometers long, but effectively 1,200 kilometers long, because scientists wedged another mirror between the two arms so light could bounce back and forth 300 times before continuing to the detector as normal. Now that LIGO and a couple other detectors around the world are functioning, we've actually managed to record gravitational waves light years away, and we've discovered that they're much more frequent than we expected. Thanks to optics, interference patterns, and a couple of mirrors, we can detect gravity itself.